Lori Lightfoot, uh, she's facing a backlash for all her bullshit. People on the left and the right in Chicago hate her. Uh, you want to see? You want to see why? Here, here's here's a big part of it. She's supposed to be a big lefty, and this sounds the opposite. This sounds like Nixon. Listen to her. This is how it's going to be. We will shut you down. We will cite you, and if we need to, we will arrest you, and we will take you to jail. Period. There should be nothing unambiguous about that. Don't make us treat you like a criminal. But if you act like a criminal and you violate the law and you refuse to do what is necessary to save lives in the city in the middle of a pandemic, we will take you to jail, period. So that was that was oh her. Oh, my God. That was yep. her talking to people in Chicago. Yeah, and the people of Chicago are were uh, through this election uh, were tired of her BS. Uh, Lightfoot, I interviewed her in 2019. It's a it's a very old school interview, um, but before the long hair and the beard, uh, and she ran on this very populist campaign of ending corruption and police brutality, trying to change things in Chicago, which uh, she never did. And case in point, just for a reference, this is one of the many things wrong with her administration, how she views police corruption and police brutality, because we have a bloated uh, police budget in the city. So it's it's there. There's other issues impacting the city. So the- just 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 talk to the family of Adam Toledo. My colleague and I, Jerry, we actually saw her do that coverage of Adam Toledo when he got shot. Uh, this young boy who was 13 years old and her, her more or less indifference approach to that video should tell everyone in your viewing audiences who she is and how she really views about police accountability and uh, police corruption. Well, because of her that kind of garbage that I just showed you, her authoritarian garbageness and her inability to do anything in Chicago and not be the progressive she promised to be. She is not. No, never. Uh, never. Well, 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 guess what happened? Never. She turns out she's the first mayor in 40 years in Chicago to lose re-election oh. since, since Jane Byrne. <laughs> yeah, well, what? <laughs> what I want to point out is if we look at 2019's <clears throat> runoff, she got about 17.5%. That's 97,667 votes. Uh, in comparison to now, she failed miserably to Paul Vallis's votes. And mind you, when Paul Vallis ran in 2019, he only got 5.4% of the votes. That's 30,326 voters uh, from that last runoff in 2019. So here's who they've chosen because they had they, – they, she didn't make the runoff. Apparently how they do it in Chicago, I don't even know. No. So – she they rejected her and man she is just repulsive <laughs> i cannot believe she got elected in the first place you remember her yelp review from that limo service that was what <laughs> i think that tells you the whole everything about her no it's unbelievable there was and she, she, she lied it. Yeah, she, she lied. lied to like her, she lied about it yeah she gave a, a yelp review to a limo service was that, that was yelp that, that was false yes yeah how did you find out it was false uh, well, one, Chicago Corner did a coverage on it. And then number two, uh, the limo service has these uh, cameras in, in their right. cars where they track their, or track their drivers. And she indicated the driver went inside her residence, mucked up her uh, bathroom or something or did something else. And they called her out and said, uh, actually, our driver was inside the limo the whole time. You lied about this. She said he's trying to take a long way. It was some all, everything she said was like. I don't even know what set her off on this guy that she. You're kidding. Like a Karen, a quote unquote Karen kind of thing. So they Chicago's picked progressive. To, this guy uh, Brandon Johnson is now the new progressive. Is he's going to be running against the right wing um, uh, Paul Vallis, right? So that's going to be the two people. Yeah. And yeah, Paul Vallis is a guy who wants to privatize public schools. And of course, and it worked for prison. It worked for prisons. <laughs> Brandon Johnson, the progressive, is now. But you know what? So is Lori Lightfoot a progressive when she ran? So that's what I'm not going to say. I'm not saying Brandon Johnson isn't going to follow through on his campaign promises. But I'm just saying, how many times can we be let down by Democrats doing this over and over? Look at the look at every progressive Democrat including Bernie Sanders. They completely capitulated on anything they ran on. They com- completely uh, told their followers to support the their their enemies, the enemies of workers and uh and and their war pigs. 
And so Lori Lightfoot did the same goddamn thing. She runs as a big progressive. As soon as she gets power, she rules as Mitt Romney or Nixon. Um, and so now this guy Johnson, he's a longtime educator, organizer, and he got 20% of the vote, right? And what is he pl pledging to do? He's going to uh, expand... He, he's going to expand resources for Chicago's public schools by taxing the rich to afford, to boost affordable housing and public transportation, health care, and other... So his whole thing is let's tax the rich. Vallis, yeah. the guy he's going to run against now, is seen as the front runner. What? Why, yes, how? And, there's, and there's reasons why that has happened why? as well. Well, because uh, number one, under Lightfoot's administration, she, not only did she antagonize the CPD, uh, even though she gave them a bloated budget, but CPD what, meaning the Chicago Public, Chicago, yeah, yeah, no, no, Chicago, Chicago Police, Chicago Department? Police Department, yes, yes, uh, the Chicago Police Department. But on top of that, as well, uh, under her administration, she has she has allowed crime to intensify, and it's just more of her purposely antagonizing the uh, police department to be ineffective and also shutting down schools, continue on the same policies as Rahm Emanuel. We call her Rahm Emanuel 2.0, nothing fundamentally changed. And when you shut down schools, mental health services and community centers, there's going to be an uptick in crime. And then you have large real estate developers move into the South and West sides and start to place displacing people. You she has helped create and intensify an environment of desperation. And through that, media can propagandize on the fact that, oh, there's a rise in crime. We need someone tough on crime. And you get Paul Vallis, who's going to put in more money to the bloated police budget here in the city of Chicago. And that's why he's number one uh, right now to many voters. And he who controls the north side, which has the larger voter turnout, will po will potentially win the runoff in April. So, so Lori Lightfoot did such a bad job that they're going to vote for a law and order candidate in Chicago? That's what you're telling me? Yes, and the thing is, when with uh, Brandon Johnson, as as much as I want to have hope that there's that he that he can actually bring in change, you know, all those policies that you mentioned, Lightfoot said that too in an interview that I did with her. She said these same things too. She even called out Rahm Emanuel for not attending the mayoral debates in the early stages of the debates. She didn't even show up to any of the local town halls uh. or forums. And I do got a funny story. So Jerry and I covered the Northwest Side Town Hall. This was like a few months ago. And uh, when he was manning the board for the live stream, because we interviewed six out of the eight candidates, the life I went outside to take some photos for our social media. The Lightfoot campaign set up a table there uh, by by all the other candidates, and I asked the two interns, "Hey, is Lightfoot showing up?" She's thirty minutes late. They said no. Then uh, I asked them, "Well, why are you here?" And they were walking away. And, and I said, "You're not going to take any questions." And one of them said, "This is a very difficult job to do." So it should tell you what it was like being part of that political campaign and nightmare. Lightfoot was doing the exact same thing that Rahm Emanuel was doing in 2019, not showing up for the debates or town halls. And so, so now this guy, so it looks like you're, it's, you think it's going to be this guy, Vallis. This guy's this big school privatizer and big law and order candidate. So that's what's going to come to Chicago now because that, this is, that's how we got Trump. When Barack Obama failed so miserably to improve people's lives, except the wealthy, and he expanded the wars, kicked people out of their houses, imported more Hispanics. Than, when he did all that stuff, plus <laughs> didn't give people health care. Then people get desperate and they vote for Donald Trump. Now this is, looks like the same thing happening in Chicago. Lori Lightfoot does such a horrible job. People now are going to go to a guy who promises law and order. The only way this can turn around, though, is if the mayoral candidates potentially who did not make it so throw their support behind Brandon Johnson. And again, having a strong ground game. But voter turnout's key. Jimmy, you're from Chicago. You're born in this city. You know about political corruption just as much yeah. as we do because we, we've been in this city. We know what it's like and people get burnt out. And the north side always has a higher voter turnout. But anyone that can control the same amount of power that Lightfoot got in 2019 because she got a landslide victory – whoever control all the districts and get their message out there to the people, then instead of Paul Vallis, it could be Brandon Johnson. It all depends on how strong their individual ground games can be and the legacy of Lightfoot. But also, case in point for both candidates, don't get Lightfoot's endorsement. It's a kiss of death. So this guy Vallis has got a lot of dark money. 
In fact, yep. one dark money organization, the Chicago Leadership Committee, has spent more than $165,000 on TV and digital ads for Vallis' mayoral bid. The Leadership Committee? What are they about? Good, le Just leadership? Just good leadership. <laughs> 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 Lightfoot faced the public's exhaustion with her penchant for personal squabbles that often dominated headlines. She was at odds with the city's right wing police union and also its progressive teachers union, a diverse array of Chicago City Council members and even the owners of professional football, Chicago Bears, who have threatened to leave the city. Why? Because she has the biggest <laughs> dick in this building? <laughs> <laughs> why, why do the Bears want to leave? Didn't they just build them a new fucking stadium? There is a new stadium there, but also knowing how the Bears management has been a complete disaster, it's just a, it's just a power play move. But as far as I'm concerned, if you want to leave the city, fine, go. I agree. The city, you know, if, if, but if, what, what if, will they if, do? Soldier Field, what are they going to do with it? That's a very good question. In, in regards to all the mayoral candidates, some are saying find another football team, uh, do something else, open it up for communities, or you know, just open up for the public. Something. Well, the Chicago I mean, Bears, I, they're not going to leave Chicago land area. They'll they'll go to Evanston or something like that, right? They're not. Yeah, gonna but that, but then again, they're leaving the city. I mean, have some have some pride in the name. I mean, I agree, but you, you know, know, so yeah, I'm and, with then, you. and then in regards to the Chicago Teachers Union. You know, it always seems to be a tradition for every single in new mayor to go to war against the Chicago Teachers Union. Emanuel did it. Lightfoot did it. Even though even though she said she was going to listen to them, she has constantly, during her time, been a major antagonist to the entire Chicago Teachers Union. Uh, so do you think the people will, the, the, the other candidates who ran for mayor will coalesce behind that progressive Johnson? Do you think that will happen? Some of them will. There, it wasn't as a crowded field as it was last time in 2019 when we had about 18 to 20 candidates. It all depends on what they're going to get in return because that's what Lightfoot promised all of her competitors. In 2019, she got a majority of uh, her opponents to endorse her, and she made all sorts of promises. But then as the truth came out about her administration and who she is as a person – she began to go to war with everyone and antagonize everyone. I mean, one of her aides said about Lightfoot is that she never was able to take help or take criticism, and uh. she made enemies out of all the people that supported her. So the thing is, if Brandon Johnson is able to wheel and deal something convenient uh, for the uh, other candidates, then yeah, possibly. But the thing is, Willie Wilson is a very important factor. He's the one who uh, gave uh, people free gas during the pandemic lockdowns. And he, uh, at least according to when we covered, was very close friends with Paul Vallis. So if he can get the South Side, because he got the South Side to go for a light foot, if Willie Wilson potentially were to aid with or side with Paul Vallis, then that is a uh, serious problem. What, what role does Jesse Waters' tumblers play in this? <laughs> <laughs> When I was when I lived in, uh, in Chicago, there was this thing called Jesse Waters, and he would have these tumblers, right? So these, and uh, yeah. and that that was like, and then he ran for office, and he was so he had these these black kids who were very athletic, and they could do uh, gymnastics like crazy, and so they would go out and do these uh, demonstrations, and it was really it was fun to watch, and then that guy had political aspirations, Jesse Waters, right? Isn't that his name, Jesse Waters? Was that his That's name? Like yeah. The yeah, and, it seems a Fox News guy and a different guy, no. and he no, became person. He became uh, he's a black guy, and he be <laughs> didn't he become like the Secretary of State or something? That's uh, just that's Jesse White, Jesse White, Je Jesse yeah, White Jesse Tumblr Tumblers. Oh, okay. That's yeah, it. yes, uh, because obviously the VA Center is named after Jesse White too. So yeah, that's that's a thing. Oh, okay, well, listen, <laughs> Kit, I really appreciate you. Uh, so you, you, we got the news. It's bad news that Chicago is going to go. To a right winger uh, who wants potentially, to potentially didn't um didn't she sound really law and order just now when she was threatening you right? for breaking quarantine? She, she's she's going to crack down on quarantine, but she won't crack yeah. down on murders. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, just one other note about Lightfoot. You know, before in February eighteenth, she made a comment stating to people on the South Side that if they were black, not, uh, to only vote for her, and if they're not going to vote for her, don't show up. Yeah, I remember that. What? Yeah. Yeah. Wait. That's the thing that happened, Jimmy. <laughs> Holy the shit. The video's out there yeah. on social media. That Yelp I can, review I can send you the whole, link right now. The Yelp review sums her up. That early Yelp review, she's that. I just can't believe. The, it's just, doesn't it make you want to run for office? These people, these 
freaking morons are well, able to become just mayor of Chicago? Yeah, well, I mean, you think that's a coincidence? Like, doesn't Chicago, isn't that a machine that churns out? Like, it, yes. You know? There, there's def- there was a Chicago machine when I lived there and daily. Got Obama, and- the best president. <laughs> it's, it's, it's still there and still active. But the thing is, you know, for all this talk about Chicago um, being broke, that we do have the TIF funds. And there's a book, you know, I recommend anyone to get a chance to read. It's called Chicago's Not Broke. It's written by Tom Tresher. It talks about the TIF funds. And uh, if anyone else in your viewing audience wants to know about how the mayoral seat became what it is, Check out uh, the book American Pharaoh, and it will enlighten you just how crazy this entire system is. American Pharaoh is about old man daily, and I do hope that Brandon Johnson does defeat Paul Vallis. I mean, we don't need another law and order person to bloat the city uh, police budget, but it, again, it matters on the strong ground game. Who can get voters to turn out, and not, not to mention how many voters will actually care for who will be the next mayor, because Lightfoot made these promises – and she failed. And don't worry, next summer, supposedly NASCAR is going to be coming here to do their little races. Oh, that's right. Well, you know, it's crazy. She won in a landslide and then she couldn't even make the cut to for the runoff. I mean, that's a that's a really big that's tra- that's Greek tragedy that's a, slide. A personality disorder on top of whatever incompetence yes, people were mad about. That's right. You could be incompetent and not do that poorly. It was also her personality disorder. Gavin Newsom, people still mm-hmm. like him. People still like Gavin Newsom. He's the worst. <laughs> He's never been good. He's never done anything. Uh, okay, well, listen, uh, Kit, thanks again. Everybody check out Heartlands Media, Chicago Corner, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. We're going to come to Chicago in August, right? Did we just The first weekend in August, I think we're going to be in Chicago at Zany's. So, all right, we'll be there. So we'll see we'll you. show up. We'll see you all then. All right, Kit, all right. anything you, else, else you want to shout out? Uh, I just want to just, uh, again, thank you for the privilege of being on your show. Shout out to everyone in the viewing audience. Shout out to my team for Chicago Corner and Hard Lens Media. And, uh, you know, that's all we do we can to uh, build a better future. And hopefully this city will turn out maybe something better. Maybe not this election <laughs> cycle, but maybe something else. Maybe. I want to have hope, but I'm always disappointed. <laughs> okay. All right, Kit. Thanks very much. If you want to see my stand-up special, become a member at jimmydork.com. It's only $10, and come see our live stand-up comedy in Los Angeles, Palm Springs, Milwaukee, St. Paul, Honolulu, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Coho's, New York, Hartford, and more. 